good morning and welcome. So this is a prenatal yoga class that's appropriate for beginners. So even if you've never done yoga before, hopefully you'll be able to um, follow along pretty easily with this class. Now, that being said, um, if you are brand new to yoga, uh, you might want to check with your doctor to make sure there are no conditions of pregnancy that would make it challenging for you to do um, poses and to also know which poses might want to be ones that you would avoid. Um, there are certain conditions of pregnancy where, for example, squatting is not appropriate or certain um, periods of time in your pregnancy where it may not be appropriate to squat, but squatting is appropriate for a lot of reasons in pregnancy, so um, during pregnancy to build up the strength of the muscles. So you want to make sure that you know what your particular conditions are before you begin. And if you're in your first trimester and you've never done yoga before, it might be best to familiarize yourself with yoga. Certainly you can um, do some of the mo movements, but you may want to wait until your second trimester just to be certain that everything's going to be um, okay with your pregnancy. Tr first trimester pregnancies um, can be a little bit um, delicate. So you just want to be kind to your body, work with your medical professionals to make the best choices for you. So with that said, <laughs> welcome to uh, prenatal yoga. So we're going to begin um, with an elevated position and we're going to lie on our back, but we're going to elevate um, our body. So um, this generally is going to be okay, providing you've got some elevation, but you're going to need some props for this. So grab a couple of throw pillows. If you've got something like that or some pillows from the bed or even couch cushions will work. And then you're going to stack them up so that you've got one in front of the other. So you've got a little bit of an elevation and then you're going to take a blanket, fold it so you've got a nice kind of long rectangle and place that over the top. If you have another blanket, grab that because you're going to put that underneath your knees. So you'll just take that blanket and roll it and then that one will go under your legs. Then you're going to position yourself so that you can lie back over the pillows. You may have to do a little bit of adjustment with the blanket so you've got a little bit of head support that feels nice. Now, if you need more blankets use more, or more pillows, use more of those so that you've got enough of a tilt, enough elevation that you're comfortable lying backwards. And then we're going to allow the arms to rest. Now your legs can be out straight or you can put the feet together with the knees open if that's a comfortable position. And we're gonna take some deep breaths. So the reason we're settling into this pose is so we can stay a little while and focus on the breath and on letting go of the day and any other <laughs> things that might have been sort of churning around in our minds. Sometimes life gets busy, and especially if you're a mom with extra kids, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it can be challenging just to get through, <laughs> get through a day. So we're just going to let all that go for now. This is our little vacation from life with yoga class. Notice the breath coming in and the breath going out. So feel that sensation of the inhale coming down and dropping deeper into towards the pelvis and then feel the exhale kind of going outward towards the chest and the nose and out. Take a few moments just to get in touch with your baby. might be at a stage in your pregnancy where you feel some movement. Sometimes as soon as you settle down, the baby will start to move. <laughs> and then you, but you might be in an earlier stage in your pregnancy where you don't feel the movement. Just contact the baby with your mind. You can picture your baby or just feel the kind of growing life inside of you. that your body may need a little extra care. <laughs> so this is our way of letting the body 
body relax for a few moments. Just taking a few more moments here for about a minute. Just to breathe and be. Do two more breaths here. So the first part is going to be bringing the legs together if you have the knees open. If your legs were out straight, you can just start with the movement. Do a little movement at the um, thigh bone. I'm going to feel that jiggle out. And we're going to slowly bring ourselves to a seated position. So we'll let our uh, elbow help us out with that kind of roll and press up. Now, you can take your blanket, one of them, and prop yourself up. So if you fold the blanket or leave the blanket folded, so you've got about an inch or two of uh, height there, that is a perfect sort of elevation in many cases for the hips and you just want to sit right on the edge of it so that the hips are a little bit higher than the knees and then we're going to do some little movements with the spine so you can let your um, feet come back together so you've got a big um, diamond shape or you can cross one ankle over the other um, just notice which one feels better to you so we're going to rock backwards kind of let the um, back round and then we're gonna rock forward, let the baby come forward, let your breastbone come forward, kind of pull the collarbones and the shoulder blades back a little bit. So rocking back and forward. Oh, so we're gonna turn this into a roll, kind of a movement in a circle in just a moment. But let's start with these two ends. Okay, so then we're gonna do one more like this. We're gonna do some side to side. So we're gonna come back to the middle and Kind of push the ribs out one direction and push the ribs out the other direction. Let's see if we can kind of create a little bit of a side to side movement. Okay, so now we're gonna make this a circle. So going forward, coming around, coming back, over to the side, and coming forward again. So ribs out to the side, round through the back, ribs out to the side, chest forward. Just kind of working as you can. We're going to do one more in that direction. And then go the opposite direction, kind of coming back and around. Around and one more time. Back and around. Good. And then we'll come back to just the front and back one more time and find the center. Sit up nice and tall. We're going to twist. You can twist to the left or the right. I've twisted to my left. And then we're just going to look out over the opposite shoulder. So instead of turning my head to the left, I'm going to turn it to the right. Pause. And we're going to try to isolate the twist just in the upper back, especially. Um, if the, uh, you are early in the pregnancy or if it's the baby's really big, <laughs> it's not easy to work around. So you can put your hand on the other leg as needed to create a little bit more space. Try to see if you can get that twist to mostly happen in your upper back. Let the pelvis be more stable, not anchoring it to the floor too firmly, but just being mindful. 
And then coming out of that side, ooh, give yourself a little movement side to side, back and forth. Oh, and sit for just a moment, pause and notice. Do you, do, can you still feel the inclination of a twist going in that direction? And if you can, don't go anywhere yet. And then it feels like your spine is more level and there, there's no inclination of twisting one way or the other. Then go ahead and twist, or any way that's not normal anyway. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and twist around the opposite direction. Again, we're going to turn the head towards the opposite side. So I've twisted my upper back towards the right and my head towards the left. And again, we're going to try to isolate that movement right there in the upper back. And can you feel kind of the shoulders? Moving back and forth a little into the twist. Looking out over the opposite shoulder. Taking two more breaths here. And we're going to unwind this whole thing. And come around to the middle. You can do some little movement. So we're going to come to all fours and give ourselves some similar movements, but all fours. Now, if you have any issues with your wrists, um, you can put your elbows on the floor so your forearm is on the ground instead of the hand. Um, and if your knees are a little tender, you can put a blanket under the shins and see if that helps. So the way that you might do this on your forearms is to bring the elbows to the ground. You can still then move the body through these two movements and if the hands are okay put the hands on the ground putting your hands slightly forward can minimize the amount of um, action that your wrists are getting Ooh, so we're going to let the baby kind of fall we're going to pull the collarbones wide and then we're going to round up and it's almost like you're trying to hug the baby with your abdominal muscles just squeeze them in and then let this kind of fall and then squeeze them in so this little movement practice it's really simple, but it can be really useful during labor. So you throw this one in your back pocket and take it home with you <laughs> in case you find it useful later. All right, we're going to do one more like that, and then we're going to bring one leg forward. So we're going to take the right leg back behind us, bring the knee in as far as it'll go, stretch it back out. Bring it in as far as it'll go, stretch it back out. Now we're going to go out to the side with that leg and bring it all the way forward. And then you can come up so that your hands are on the thigh or you can leave your hands down closer to the floor. If you have some yoga blocks at your house for whatever reason, you can grab a few blocks, put one under each hand. Just in case, we're going to just use like if you've got furniture nearby, you can certainly use furniture to give yourself a little sense of balance. So we're gonna take the weight back just a little bit so there's a little less pressure on the front of this hip. And then we're gonna let ourselves go into the lunge a little bit deeper just to feel how that goes. Back off a little bit. We're feeling for that sensation where we just reach the point where the stretch is enough. And then back off a little bit. And we're gonna come in one more time. We'll pause right there. Draw in a little bit through your abdominal, so it's like you're hugging your baby just a little bit. And then we're going to take this slightly to the diagonal. So this leg is going to go more straight, maybe all the way straight. Put your hands over on the diagonal so you've got quite a bit of room for baby. And then see if you can fold forward. You can lift the toes or leave that foot down as you see fit. Right, so once again to the diagonal we're going to take that leg back and pause there in the middle and give ourselves a couple of rounds of these two poses you may find one side of the shape feels a little more normal now than the other side hmm. all right so we're going to add the left leg in so we're going to take the left leg back bring it in take it back bring it in take it back going out to the diagonal and bring in that leg all the way forward and we can kind of sl slide it into place 
and then come to the lunge in the way that seems appropriate for you. So whether your hands are holding onto your hips or you're holding onto a piece of furniture or you've got some yoga blocks, whatever might work best. We're easing the hip forward just to the point of feeling that stretch and then easing ourselves back a bit, easing the hips forward and easing it back a bit. do that one more time and I'm going to find that point right where the stretch begins and pause right there take in some deep breaths and then I'm going to send the hips back straightening out or close to straightening out this front leg both hands come over to the diagonal and then folding forward so you might feel that in the back of your thigh, it might be a little more towards the inner thigh. Just notice the sensation where you feel it. You can have the knee slightly bent as needed. See what happens if it goes more straight or less and choose the one that's right for you. All right, so we're gonna take that leg back. So leaning and taking it out to the diagonal. And then one more time, we're gonna pause for a couple of little rounds of cat. And again, you might find one of these two shapes feels a little more normal <laughs> than the other after we've been in a lunge. Okay, now we're gonna do some downward dog. Inversions can be a little bit tricky. An inversion just means my head is lower than my hips um, in this context. Um, and so if you feel nauseous or dizzy at all, um, I'm going to show you an alternative to dog after, so you can um, go ahead and come either back to all fours or you can stand on your feet um, and pause there. So to do a downward dog, we're going to put the hands about shoulder distance apart and then tucking the toes, we'll take the hips up. You want to take your hips back as far as you can so that you take the pressure away from the wrists. Release the neck a little bit so there's not a lot of tension around your shoulders. Your shoulder blades should be on your back and it's not by your ears. <laughs> but you don't have to pull them down too much. Just let them slide into the normal place they would live. And then you can walk your heels up and down to work through the backs of the legs. So that's the first option. The second option will require a piece of furniture. So I'm going to use this table that I have, but you could use a chair. Um, or you could use a wall even. So I'm gonna put my hands on the surface of the table and walk my hips back so that I'm in a downward dog, but this time my head then stays level with my hips. When you're pregnant, your um, blood volume is a little higher than normal. And so sometimes inversions that felt really good when you weren't pregnant become not so great while you are. So this is an alternative for those. <laughs> And I just move a hip back and forth to get that kind of stretch through the backs of the legs that downward dog is so great for. When you're ready, bring yourself slowly up to a standing position. Oh, give yourself a nice stretch. <laughs> oh. And then we're going to find ourselves in a mountain pose. So a mountain pose means that I point the toes forward. The feet about hips distance apart. You might need a little bit more room for baby with the, <laughs> the hips so that your feet feel solid underneath you. You can spread out your toes and feel like you're resting on your foot so that the front to back um, weight distribution is even. So not too much in the heels, not too much in the balls of the feet. And the kind of side to side distribution is even. So I'm not leaning into the edges or into the center of my foot, but there's a weight distribution that kind of covers the whole area. So that's our mountain pose. Shoulders relax down, grow a little taller. You can hug in the baby with your abdominal muscles to help support the curve of your low back. And so we'll take this mountain pose for just a few moments and stand with it. Oh, so I'm going to like imagine this is the top edge of a mat. If you don't have a yoga mat, you don't need one. Just kind of clear out a space for yourself so you've got some room to grow room to stretch out. 
So we're gonna put all the weight in the right leg. Now, the left leg we're gonna pick up off the floor. Again, because of um, the weight of the baby, the, depending on how far along you are, you might find that your balance is a little trickier than it used to be. <laughs> so you can start with just resting the toes on the floor and the heel against the ankle and see how that uh, balance is for you. You can bring the foot up to the calf or you can skip over the knee and come all the way up to your thigh if you like for a tree pose. So putting one leg against the other and then maybe extending the arms. If it's better to keep your arms low, you can when you lose your balance, catch yourself. So one of the things that balancing poses do for us is they help us learn how this new, <laughs> this new uh, sense of gravity or center of gravity operates and helps us catch when we fall. Oh, don't be surprised if while you're pregnant you fall more than normal. It's, it's not uncommon. Okay, so we're gonna <laughs> take one more breath there. So we're gonna take this leg and try to step it back. See if we can catch the balance there. So this leg is gonna point forward and this leg is gonna point a little bit to the diagonal. So this is the warrior two shape. My hips are gonna follow along with the legs. If it feels like you're starting to, the knee is starting to collapse inward, you're pulling this hip around too much. Let it go where it goes. Keep this knee pointing forward. Keep your feet nice and stable so that they're not too slippery. My mat is a little slippery, so I'm just going to make it a little stickier. Water works. <laughs> so we're going to take the arms up. Now, if your shoulders are really tight or sensitive, you can bring the arms a little lower. You can put your hands at your heart if you like. The palms can go down or up. See if there's a preference you have there. So we're going to hold for two more breaths. Keep your feet placed and try to stretch the mat now between your feet or the floor. And then we're gonna come back to a little reverse where you're stretching out this front side and then bringing the elbow to the thigh, stretching out this side to side angle pose. So reverse or moon warrior and side angle pose. Go slow enough that you can maintain the balance, even if it's a little tricky. <laughs> you can use your hand on your thigh or your elbow. One more time. Now we're gonna straighten out the front leg and come into triangle pose. We're gonna try to stretch out the torso as long as you can. The lower I go with my hand, the more I feel this in my hamstrings. So to stay up a little higher means a little less hamstring stretch. So feel that out for yourself. We're gonna to try to stretch out the torso as best you can. Recognize that the weight of the baby may be kind of pulling down. See if you can lift this rear inner thigh a little so that you've got some support there for you. Hug in a little bit and give that baby a snuggle with your abdominal muscles. Then if it feels okay, you can float your top arm straight up. You can look down at your big toe or up towards your thumb. Which one feels better in your neck? Ooh, it might be wobbly. <laughs> you could put a wall at your back in the event that you're feeling really wobbly. So if you fall, you'll catch with the wall. Ooh, one more breath here. Now we're gonna come around to the center, bringing both feet around and then we're just gonna heel toe them in. Ooh. And then come to that mountain pose. And let's see if there's a difference than the last time we found mountain pose. So is there a difference between your right hemisphere and your left? Noticing if the mountain pose created any changes for you there. Ooh. So we're gonna take the weight to the left leg and come into the balancing pose once again, so the tree. So bringing the foot either just the ankle or up on the calf or skipping all the way over the knee onto your thigh. It's a little much for me, but you can do it if you like. So we're finding that balance and if you fall, catch with your leg, okay? So we're teaching ourselves how to catch with this new distribution <laughs> of center of balance. Oh. And when it's nice as if you practice balancing poses during your whole pregnancy, you might <laughs> find that sort of shifting landscape. So we're gonna step this leg back, try to find that warrior two shape. Again, this is kind of at a diagonal, pointing a little bit to the, 
to the side. <laughs> no one's getting out any sort of rulers or protractors. This leg is gonna go forward and I just wanna feel balanced in my pelvis so my legs feel nice and strong. Bring the arms up when you're ready. You can bend this knee more or less and then come on back to reverse. And we're gonna stretch out this side into a side angle. Keep your legs nice and strong. Coming back, watch that front knee. <laughs> Make sure it's not collapsing too much inward. It's nice and steady. Coming on back. Reaching out. <laughs> One more time. Oh, all right, so we're gonna come back, straighten out our front leg, and we'll come into the triangle pose. And again, you may wanna slide down, try to find, there's the right amount of hamstring stretch for me today. Maybe it's a little bit lower today. Stretch out nice and long. Feel yourself hugging the baby. <laughs> and then you can add an arm or not add an arm. You can look down at your toe. You can look up at your thumb. Which one's better? Mm. See how much length you can get on your side waist with your triangle pose. Take in one more breath. We're gonna come all the way back, turn the toes in, and then we're gonna pause right there for now and notice you might do a little bit of a jiggle <laughs> Give everything a little shake. Oh. All right, so we're gonna do a wide squat. Now again, generally speaking, the wide squats are fairly innocuous. If the hips go lower than the knees, those squats can be a little trickier. I think they're good to practice, providing everything's okay with your pregnancy, okay? So otherwise, you can keep your squat quite shallow if you're not sure. So the hips are above the knees. At the most, we're gonna get the hips level with the knees. So we're gonna put one hand on each thigh and you're gonna imagine <laughs> that um, from the pelvic floor, we have an elevator. We're gonna take the pelvic floor up all the way to the fifth floor. So we're gonna try to progressively lift and then come down slowly um, with the pelvic floor muscles. So holding this wide squat. Imagine you're on the ground floor and you're going to lift your pelvic floor up one floor and then you're going to lift it up another floor and then tighten the pelvic floor muscles and lift another floor. So we're at the third floor housewares. <laughs> then we're going to go up another floor lingerie <laughs> and then we're going to go up to the fifth floor rooftop garden. Hold steady on the fifth floor now the trickiest part is coming down nice and slow. So see if you can go down just one floor, hold steady. Coming down another floor, hold steady. We still have some action happening there. To the second floor. And then we're gonna go all the way to the ground floor with our pelvic floor muscles. One of the things to notice when you work the pelvic floor is does it impact the way your knees experience the pose? So when we do this the next time, notice that little potential for um, more support versus less that you might get while you're doing those movements with the pelvic floor. So we're gonna step back to our mountain pose and take a moment. If you need a drink of water, grab one now. Oh. And then see if there's a difference when you hold this mountain pose compared to the very first one or even compared to the second one. Notice if a change has occurred in your body. So we're gonna do another balancing pose. Now this one can be useful if you have a wall or some surface that you can let yourself tilt into. It can be really useful to have that. You can also get um, something like a water bottle, a yoga block, something where you can have a little bit of height. So I'm gonna use a yoga block, but you could just as easily use a Tupperware container um, or this is about nine inches tall or a book, this nice big sturdy book. Um, or a water bottle that is not, um, that's full of water, so it's not too squishy. So I'm also gonna utilize my piece of furniture here just to help me, I'm gonna try not to break anything. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna put the block on the floor about a foot in front of my own foot. I'm gonna do the right side first. And then I'm gonna put my hand on that block 
and then leaning into the furniture with my thigh, I'm gonna take my back leg all the way up. And if you have a wall, it's even better because you can really lean into the wall, lift through this leg, and hold steady as best you can with this half moon balance. Ooh. Keep it in the nice <laughs> lift. Good, we got two more breaths. If you fall, slide down the wall. <laughs> or the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna bring my knee in a little bit, put my foot on the ground, and then put all the weight back into the feet, come up nice and slow. So if there's any sense of kind of wobbliness or lightheadedness, don't go anywhere yet. Hold on to the furniture. <laughs> oh. And then we're gonna come around to the other side. So turning the opposite way. Again, putting the foot or the block about a foot in front of your foot. You're gonna lean your <laughs> hip into or your thigh into the structure that you're using for support. Oh, and then take your back leg off the floor <laughs> and try not to wreck the house. <laughs> All right, let's come back a little bit farther. There we go. <laughs> And see, so we're lifting the hip, giving ourselves some nice height and length. Oh, can you hug your baby here? <laughs> it's a little different when it's sideways, isn't it? Oh, taking a big breath. Ooh, one more. All right, so this leg's gonna come in. Oh, we're gonna drop it down. Nice and slow, come all the way up. Good, that was good. Now we're gonna do another set of those elevator squats. <laughs> so we're going to notice the impact on the knees and the hips as we engage the pelvic floor muscles. And again, it's just squeezing. It's, you know, so maybe a little bit like you're trying to cut off the flow of urine, but if you can think about it more as the whole saddle of muscle that lives between your pubic bone and your tailbone, that's what we're after. So we want to lift that whole saddle <laughs> structure hammock of muscle up so back to our wide squat hips can be a little higher than the knees rest your hands we're going to take a breath and then exhale <laughs> we're going to lift that pelvic floor up just one floor pause there take it up another floor pause there try to feel like you've still got some reserve take it up another floor Pause there. Maybe today you only have three floors in your elevator. Let's see if we can go to the fourth floor. And then let's see if we can go all the way up to the fifth floor. See if there's one more layer where you can really contract those muscles. Hold steady. Maybe it makes your face make funny shapes. Then we're going to try to let go just one floor, not everything. This is the harder part for me is the slow down. And then down one more, but not everything yet. Still a little bit of reserve there. Let go one more floor, still a tiny bit of reserve, and then let it all go and come on back up. Now what I notice is if I engage my pelvic floor somewhere between the third floor and the fifth floor, um, the weight actually comes off my knees a little bit. Um, and so this is something to kind of be mindful of. The stronger we can make the pelvic floor, the more um, support our legs and knees have. Um, in life in general, but definitely during pregnancy. Okay, we're gonna come back to our mountain pose. <laughs> and then notice, once you stand here in the mountain again, you're gonna hug the baby and let your shoulders relax and feel your weight on your feet nice and even. See if you can notice the, if there's any change in your body. Those poses in particular, the half moon balance um, I find very uplifting. Notice if it changes for you. Oh. All right, so we're gonna do one more um, standing sequence. So we're gonna come back to the top of the mat. If you need a drink of water, grab one. Oh. And then this balancing pose, you can use the wall. I'm gonna use my um, end table here so that we can get the hips really level. This will let the outer hip muscles get a little stronger and if the outer hip's a little weak, this will be a nice way to kind of stabilize um, your hips as your, preg as your pregnancy continues. So I'm going to put my hands, if you have yoga blocks, you can take two blocks and put your hands on the blocks. I'm going to use this 
um, little side table in my living room, put my hands on the edge, and then all the weight's in my right leg, and I'm gonna take my left leg straight back, trying to hold the hips nice and level, and feel how that creates some challenge for your outer hip. Trying to hold level, reach through the heel on the leg that's in the air. You can point the toes if you want, but keep that foot anchoring back. Oh, keep reaching through your heel, even if your toes are pointy. Okay, can you feel that right hip, or maybe you're doing your left hip first. Can you feel that action getting nice and nice and tired? So we're gonna put the toes to the ground and come up. Now we're gonna try a high lunge. So we're gonna point the hips forward. We're gonna come up onto the toes. If that's too much, do warrior one. Put the foot on the ground, a little on the diagonal. Let your hip go with that diagonal, okay? So the hips and the toes line up. That keeps the knees happy. All right, so we'll hold that high lunge. Just a little bit more of a balance challenge. And you can straighten out your front leg a little bit and bend it to add just a little bit of more challenge to the balance if your balance is really strong today. Lift the top of your thigh a little bit, so we're really hugging that knee cap up. All right, so then we're gonna take this left leg step forward. We're gonna put all the weight into that left leg, either putting the hands on the blocks, or maybe on your wall, or on a side table, or on your couch. <laughs> Lower in the hips, so that they are level, as level as you can make them, feel it out with your own awareness, reach through that heel. Oh. Again, you can kind of point the toe or stretch that leg back. Good, we're gonna try to hold steady long enough that we really feel this left hip doing some work. You might feel it all the way down your leg. <laughs> the muscles on that outer hip and the back leg Lift your kneecap a little bit, get your quads engaged, and then we're gonna step all the way back. And again, we're either gonna find the high lunge where everything points forward and you're on your toes, or the warrior one where you're slightly turned to the side but still facing forward with your chest. Whichever one is the better one for you, if this one is too wobbly. So you can just hold the pose, stretching the heel back and the knee forward, or you can straighten out the front leg and bend the knee back into the lunge to add that little extra balance challenge. <laughs> so your body has to stabilize a little bit more. Hug in the baby. Oh. All right. One more. And then we're gonna step forward into the mountain pose. <laughs> you can shake it a little bit if you like and then feel, is there a difference in the way your hips feel or your legs compared to the last time we did this pose? I feel taller. <laughs> Notice how you feel. All right, one more time, we're gonna take that wide step out. We're gonna do one more set of squats with elevators. <laughs> or you can think about it different ways. One yoga class I took, the um, teacher described, you know how those soft serve cone machines, how you sort of build up like roll of, you know, little layers of ice cream cones. If you want to think about it as an ice cream cone building process, you can. I have some issues <laughs> imagining that myself. Elevators work better for me, but you do you. <laughs> so I've got my hands on my thighs. My hips are slightly higher than the knees. You can have your hips slightly lower if you like. So we're gonna pause a moment, notice what the ground floor, floor feels like, and then we're gonna lift that pelvic floor just a little bit. Just one floor, feel that. Take it up with another floor. <laughs> Everything from the belly button all the way around to the sacral dots, <laughs> those little sacral bubbles on the back are lifted, right? So we're gonna lift another floor. Feel all the muscle that lives in that lower belly, pelvic floor, all active. One more time, we're gonna see if we can go up another floor. The rooftop garden's just one floor away, y'all. <laughs> Let's see if we can get all the way up there. Hug up through the pelvic floor, squeeze the baby in a little bit, and then we're gonna try to come down a little lower. So we're gonna come down one more, hold that pelvic floor nice and steady. One floor, hold it a little bit. 
We're not out yet. One more floor, not out yet. And then all the way to the ground. Now, we're gonna straighten out the legs. You can turn the toes in a little bit if it feels okay in your hip. And then we're gonna see if we can fold forward. You might stop with your head level with your hips. If it feels okay to let yourself fold all the way in, go for it. And you can even add a little side to side sway. Oh. And then try again. And add a little sway. <laughs> and try again. So it's your pose. Choose what's appropriate for you. If you get a little lightheaded, come up a little higher. And sometimes it just feels nice. <laughs> One more breath. So we're gonna come out a little bit incrementally, but we're gonna add a twist. So blocks are really helpful. Again, if you don't have a yoga block, you can use anything that could act like a yoga block. So you just need something that's a little bit high, a saucepan turned upside down, a temp empty Tupperware container turned upside down, a really sturdy stack of books, <laughs> a water bottle. So one hand is gonna press down. I'm gonna try to leave my hips mostly stable. And again, I'm gonna work on twisting just my upper back so I can release some of the pressure from the upper back. Switching hands, I'm gonna turn oh, as much as I can just through that upper back. It's okay if the hip dips a little bit to help. Let's see if we can focus the twist in that upper part of the spine. Oh. One more on that side, and then we're coming all the way out. So we're gonna wiggle the feet in. Come up. Oh. Give yourself a nice big stretch. We're gonna grab the right wrist, stretch a little to the left. Oh. Coming back, grab your left wrist, stretch a little to the right. And then we're gonna come all the way back and oh, jiggle out the shoulders. All right, jiggle out the legs. <laughs> now we're gonna try a deep squat. What that means is that the hips are gonna go lower than the knees. Now, with that in mind, some of us should not squat for a couple of reasons. If you're in the 35 to 38 weeks of your pregnancy period of time, you want to avoid squats during that time. The thought is that it could um, stimulate labor. Um, I will say that I don't know if that's true <laughs> for you. Um, everybody's a little different, but it's a good idea just to avoid squats during that little time period um, if you're not sure. And then if you have some pregnancy conditions and you've been told not to squat, this is the squat you want to avoid. So what you can do instead is a chair pose and that's just sinking back the hips and hold and steady, okay? So hold and steady, lift the baby, and <laughs> let yourself just pause with that shape. And that way you're building strength, um, even if this lower squat is not for you. Another option is to build yourself up something to sit on so that you're actually sitting down and oh, the squat is just happening because your legs are in this position, or you can squat if you think it's right for you. So again, this is the tricky pose, but there's lots of benefits to doing this. It helps the knees, the hips, the um, ankles all prepare for birth. And so we're opening and stretching out muscles that are important um, for the labor process. Uh, but again, we, you know, we wanna balance all of the potential hazards with all of the potential benefits and choose appropriately. So taking a few moments here in the squat that you're choosing, I've got a little seat under me, but you can do this with no seat if squatting is comfortable. If you're building yourself up, if squatting has not been something you do every day, try it this way with a little seat under you. <laughs> See how it goes. You can even sit down on a step um, or a little, um, <laughs> if you've got little toddler stools uh, laying around your house, you could try one of those. <laughs> Just getting the knees close to the armpits and the hips a little lower than the knees is what we're aiming for to start. And then we can build up from there. <laughs> Two more breaths here. Now some people will be able to sit down quite easily onto the floor. If that is not you, then you can follow me. So I'm gonna come out of the squat by lifting my hips, getting everything out from under me, and then I'm gonna put one knee on the ground and then the other and sit down. Not the most elegant way to sit on the floor, but it will get me there. <laughs> so we're gonna do a sequence, a little floor sequence. Again, 
Um, there's a couple places where you can put blankets to be helpful. So I'm going to use one blanket to sit on and I'm going to use one blanket to pad the knee. So for knee padding, I usually roll the blanket up so I've got a little bit more of a um, thicker support and then for sitting, I like the blanket to be a little more open. Just feel it out for yourself. And again, we're going to sit basically right on the edge of the blanket, not in the center of the blanket. Because the way the blanket helps is that it elevates the hips. Okay, so then lean back or lean forward and kind of shuffle your hips back behind you. Okay, so I've got one blanket here for sitting on and one to use for support. So I'm gonna take the legs out in a V, not as wide apart as I can go, but a conservative V. I'm gonna bend one knee and bring that foot in towards the center line. This foot might nestle in toward your groin. It might be closer to your ankle, wherever it lands. Again, if you need a little knee support, this is where you might put that other blanket underneath that knee so it has a nice um, feeling of stability. Now, I'm gonna take this hip and just bring it slightly further forward so I'm turned a little bit towards this bent knee. So I'm coming over this way. So we're gonna mimic the same thing we did with the warrior two, I'm coming over to the back and then keeping some length here, I'm coming over this long leg. So come in back. Bend this knee slightly, keep the toes pointing up so the leg is really active, coming over and then back and over. Now I'm gonna hold this over here. So holding steady, oh, I'm gonna take this arm, reach it over my ear, and then I'm gonna sweep it down and bring it back behind me. Reach it up and over the ear. Try to be mindful of how much you're working your low back here. Bring it out, keep baby pointing to the wide edge here. Bring the arm up and over the ear. Sweep it back. You can even look back behind you if that helps. And then one more time, we're gonna bring the arm up and over and then use it to help bring us out of that shape. Coming back to the center. Ooh, stretch out that leg, bend this one. Give it a little wiggle. <laughs> we're gonna do the same thing, but on the other side, but we're not quite there yet. So one thing to notice is, is my spine um, back to normal yet? So often when we do a pose where we twist or we side bend, some of the fluid in the spinal column shifts from one side to the other. So it still feels like we're sort of bending sideways. So wait until you don't feel that anymore before you do the other side. So again, I'm taking this hip slightly forward. So now I'm turned towards the left knee, which is the bent knee on my side. It might be your right knee. And I'm gonna take this stretch backwards and over. Stretch back. Stretching out this whole side right there on the front and then coming over and stretching the other side, maybe resting my hand on my shin, maybe the elbow on the thigh, maybe grabbing that big toe with your hand. Pick up your kneecap a little bit, energize your leg coming over. One more time. All right, so here I'm gonna stay. So again, I can hold on in one of those places. I'm just gonna put my hand on my shin here and then I'm gonna sweep the arm back behind me and bring it up over the ear. My pinky is a little bit lower than my thumb, or my thumb is a little bit higher than my pinky. Pinky's a little bit lower. So I'm kind of turning my palms slightly to the side, reaching back, reaching over, stretching out that side, <laughs> reaching back, oh, reaching over, reaching back one more time, oh, reach over, and then we're gonna use that arm to come all the way back up. Excellent. All right, yogis. So we're gonna oh, find a comfortable way to sit. So it could be sitting cross-legged. You might come back to the butterfly shape with the feet together. Whatever's gonna work for you. If you wanna sit on a bunch of pillows <laughs> that you're quite elevated, you can do that as well. We're gonna do a, a weird breath practice. <laughs> so it's called bumblebee breath. And essentially, the the breath practice is to create a, a little bit of sensory deprivation. We're gonna cover our eyes, we're gonna cover our ears, and we're gonna hum so that we create a little buzzy sound in the head, which sounds a little bit like bees. 
the reason we're doing this practice is to help um, practice the arc to give the mind something to do and we might have to practice quite a bit labor is an interesting uh <laughs> an interesting experience to say the least it's sort of a, you know, because it's so powerful and so natural you will be in an altered state <laughs> for sure but sometimes little things like this this kind of bumblebee breath can give you something to focus on um while the contractions are moving so if we practice now and you decide that you like it then you'll have it as a tool for later okay it's unusual though so if you need to be alone while you do this, go ahead, and go ahead and secure that as needed. Um, it's fun for toddlers though, so if you've got those around, you can get them to do it with you. So we're gonna take the thumbs, and essentially we're just gonna push this little flap back on the ear so that we've got a little bit of um, a little deprivation in our hearing. And then closing your eyes, you're just gonna rest your fingertips across the eyes. So you've got a little um, <laughs> a little uh, gentle pressure on your eyelids, not too much. Take a nice big breath, and then you're gonna exhale a hum. Mm -hmm. Let yourself inhale through the nose if you can. And exhale out that hum. Mm -hmm. Now you can change the pitch if you like. Mm -hmm. One more breath. And then let yourself release your head <laughs> and just notice where the breath work takes you. Now for me, this breath work takes me deeply inside myself. So a lot of the kinds of distractions from the outside world kind of fall away. And I really am just focused on my own experience. So this can be useful if you um, need to just kind of block out a little bit of the outside world for a few minutes and get in touch with yourself. Now, as I said, it's an unusual breath practice. So <laughs> if it's not for you, that's okay. <laughs> you can put it on the shelf and do something else. So next time, we'll take a look at um, a different breath practice that you can do to help yourself kind of stay focused and present. So it's time for a relaxation and relaxation um, is can be done in a lot of different ways. If you're still comfortable laying on your back, you can go back to the thing we had at the beginning where we kind of propped ourselves up. But if you're not comfortable laying on your back, we're going to do a side lying Shavasana and we're going to lie, lay down on our left side. So get two blankets or grab a blanket on your throw pillows because you might want a little bit of support in different places. So I'm gonna use a pillow for my head and I'm gonna use a blanket in between my knees and then I'm probably gonna use a pillow for my top arm. So I'll put that up front just in case. So here's how I'm gonna set this up. Now, if the surface you're laying down on is quite hard, you may wanna put down a blanket first so you've got a soft surface for the edge of your hip, okay? So I'm gonna put a blanket right in between my two knees. I'm gonna lay down on my side and build up the support under my head until that feels just right. What I mostly want is for my leg here to hang out about level with my hip. So you build up whatever support you need in between the knees for that. And then I find it useful to have a support for the top arm so the shoulder has a little support. You might be very comfortable with your arms a little lower. For me, that creates a little bit of a shoulder um, trickiness, a little discomfort. So the pillow here is nice. So adjust until it's comfortable. 
And the reason to spend a few minutes in a final relaxation shape, even um, if it seems like you're kind of busy, is because this is the place where we get to really tune into our parasympathetic nervous system, our relaxation nervous system. And so this can help us digest a little better, which sometimes can be tricky while you're pregnant. It can help relax the nerves that are um, responsible for a lot of the sensory data that might be getting overwhelmed with the growing uh, baby <laughs> and all of the fascial data that's being sent to the mind, the brain from that um, expansion. So allow yourself a few moments to relax if you can after your yoga practice. If you have toddlers climbing on you, do your best. <laughs> that is a, <laughs> a potential, um, a potential uh, side effect of yoga <laughs> in a house with young people. Allow yourself to simply rest, unwind your face, let your jaw relax. If you can, let your lips get a little softer, your eyes a little kinder. Well, this might be the time where the baby also starts to get really active. So you can just be present for the sweet sensations of your baby moving around in your belly. <laughs> or not so sweet as the case may be. <laughs> just let yourself relax into those. Stay for about another minute. Just stay present with your breath for now. Take a really big breath and let it go with a sigh. <sighs> Wiggle your fingers and toes a little bit and then stretch them apart as wide apart as you can get them to go and then wiggle them again and stretch them apart oh, and wiggle them again one more time <laughs> and then do some wrist and ankle movement. And then we're gonna stretch everything. Now, if it feels okay for you to roll onto your back and stretch, you can do it that way, or you can just stretch out <laughs> on your side. Swing your legs up front, and then push yourself up to a seated position. Oh, however is best to get there. Thank you for joining me for a little prenatal yoga. Hopefully you and your baby both enjoyed the practice. I hope to see you again. Let's take a nice big breath. And a big deep sigh. 
Namaste, yogis and babies. Welcome to the rest of your day.